very cool. All right. All right. Yeah, well, we just, we can get started. Yep. All right. All right. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for showing up um, to the, the uh, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday Mental, Mental Academy meetings, services. Um, it's good to see everyone. Yeah, we definitely get started in the interest of time and in the interest of respect for time and ourselves. So um, today is going to be, um, we're going to have to, you know, you, you know, people have things for a long time, like uh, seminars and, uh, you know, uh, trial, you know, trials, subscriptions, free 90 days, whatever else it is. So today is, is <laughs> today is you got to decide whether you're going to sign up or not. Right. Today, we are going to decide whether we sign up or not. Sometimes we have to in life you know, we have to draw some, some lines in the sand. We have to make some decisions, right? Um, we can't keep straddling the fence between yes, or no, maybe so, I don't know, whatever else it may be. So what's important is for us to be able to make conscious decisions about what we want to be or do or have in life, right? So, you know, today is going to be, is going to be kind of one of the, one of these days, there's this side and there's this side. You know, in Southern California, where where I'm from, um, <laughs> we have uh, we have a uh, we have some people uh, that are in some very distinct distinguished groups, and they are <laughs> the Bloods and the Crips. And I'm sure everything in the world is possible, and everything has probably been tried and been done. But usually and normally, if you're on this side, right, let's just say you're on this side, then you're not on this side, right? So we are we are going to have to choose some sides today in life, right, about what it is we are and what we are not, what it is that we want to be and what we don't, because trying to play both sides is a waste of time, get you hurt, get you messed up, and you won't have anything to show for, for any of your participation, right? You'll be ostracized from both ends, right? So today we're gonna make some, we're gonna need to make some choices about wh who we serve, what we serve, who we are, who we aren't, what we are, what we are not, and things like that, right? So let's get it started. If you remember, You remember, I'll probably, I'll probably come back to this line. If you remember, right, I need a need a volunteer, right? If you remember, I said last week, I said, when you're when you are meeting a person, right? Let's start with this. I said last week, and hopefully you guys, you know, can see the board, right? Hopefully you guys can see it. Right. Okay. When I so when I said last week, when you're meeting a person, right? I said you're not meeting a person. You're meeting what? I need a volunteer. Who remembers what I said about that? When you're meeting a person, you're not really meeting a person. You're meeting a what? Lucky, I believe you said you're meet, meeting a mind. You're meeting a mind. Thank you, sir. So that means this person really is this. That's really what that means. So now within a mind, right? So now we're gonna go down and you're gonna see something. You're gonna, you're gonna see that what you think is actually isn't. It's actually in reverse order so that you have a better understanding of something. So here's what I mean. You meet a person, you're really meeting a mind. A mind is a collection, is a collection of what? Another, another, give me another volunteer. One of the hardest things in teaching, whether you're teaching people, whether you're teaching an animal or anything else, is sometimes to be patient enough to help to allow people to, to participate. Because sometimes you have so much information you want to get out and you're like, I'll just do it myself. So it's like, I'll just, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. When you give somebody something to do, 
You know, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Yeah, but you can't do everything, right? And sometimes if you're the only one doing, you'll you'll be the only one doing forever, right? So sometimes the hardest thing to do is be patient and slow down because there's so many things you want to tell people that sometimes it doesn't always allow them to learn as effectively because sometimes you sacrifice quality for quantity. I got to tell them a whole bunch of things, but that doesn't mean they understood half of it. So it'd been better if you taught half of it 100%. So when you're meeting up, when, when you think you're meeting a person, you're really not, you're meeting a mind. Okay, so what is in, what is a mind comprised of? What is it made up of? What is in a mind? I need some patterns. Say it again. Thoughts and patterns. Thoughts and patterns. What do you mean by patterns? Habits. We are habitual creatures and our thoughts usually run the habits that we have over and over again, which was what you generally makes for our mind and personality. Okay. So thank you, sir. So thoughts. You said patterns. Another word for that, let's just say habits, right? Beliefs. So now you went from this person to the mind. You went from the mind to thoughts, habits, and beliefs. You're meeting a person's thoughts, habits, and beliefs about themselves, about you, about the world, about everything. They have thoughts, habits, and beliefs about everything, whether they're conscious or unconscious, meaning whether they're aware of the ones they have or they're not. So you went from this person, this person, this name right here, this person represents everybody, me, you, everyone on this call, everyone in the world. It's it, A person is a mind. A mind is a collection of thoughts, habit, habits, and beliefs. Now, this thoughts, habits, and beliefs create a persona. Another volunteer. Who knows what the word persona means? It's the same, it's the same place where the word person comes from. This is the this is the original word, persona. The word person comes from here. So who knows what persona means? Anybody? Is it the uh, is it the the overall description of your personality? Not your person, but the what represents as your person, your persona. Now you get man, great work. Now we're getting to it. When you said per person, right? Person, persona personality but nality right this part the the end part right is it is our our actions their actions that this persona and this person um moves with it's what they do but they're doing it because of their persona right so this persona this actual word persona is a latin word it means mask or character. It's a, a role that someone is playing. It's a role they're playing. Their personality is the role they're playing. It's the actions that they employ or apply based on the mask or character, based on, based on the thing that they have, that they believe themselves to be the thoughts habits and beliefs right are coming from the person the persona and they are acted as a personality right when you have a mask or a character an actor they are playing a role this is not who they really are necessarily this is just the role that they're playing right now so like I said, you know, last week, and I mentioned the same person over and over because he's my favorite actor, Denzel or Holly Berry, Sandra Bullock, doesn't matter who it is. When they're on a TV show or a movie, they are playing a, a role. There's a script. This is your script. Your thoughts, your habits, and your beliefs are your script. It is what you are running on every day. In the mask, the character, in the role that you're playing. Right? So... Because essentially, that's why we can change. We can play the role of father. We can not be a father. We're 10 years old. 
We could be playing the role of a plumber. We could be playing the role of a husband or a wife. We could be playing the role of a doctor or a dentist. And we can change all the time. The mask, the character, the role we're playing. Denzel had a hundred movies, probably, right? But he's still the same person playing all those roles because the roles are not him. He's the one that gives life to the roles. He's the one that makes these roles come alive, right? So when you are so when you are meeting a what you think is a person, no, what you're really meeting is a mask or character named this, named Jesus, named John, named Joe, named Sally, Harry, it doesn't matter. You're what you're doing is you're meeting a you are meeting a mind that has thoughts, habits, and beliefs that create the person, the mass, the character, the persona. And those thoughts, habits, and beliefs are played out in actions that we would say, oh, this is a person's personality. This is just how they are. This is who they are. We judge them based on how they act. This is who they are to us. They tell the truth. They don't. They're loud. They're quiet. They're whatever they are. That's just a, a personality. That is just actually the, the action of thoughts, habits, and beliefs that are on the inside coming out to you, right? So what I'm saying is that when you boil all this down, when you boil a name down, a person's name, you are not meeting that person. Meaning if you were to walk on the street and you saw you know, a person just walking by you on a regular sidewalk in a normal city, somebody just walked by you, you could see the person, you could, but you wouldn't even know what to call them. And even if you didn't know what to call them, oh, how are you doing? My name is John. Oh man, nice to meet you. My name is Lucky. Great. But do you know them? Would you know them? Right? And the answer would be no, because even though you've met them, you don't know them. This is what you have to know. This is what you're meeting. This is what you know of a person or you don't. As much as you know or as little as you know, that's who you know. That is what you know. That is how much you know of everything that flows from that. Right? So you are meeting a mind. I tell my daughter all the time, you don't have to like someone, hate them, love them, or anything else, but you have to know them. You have to know who they are. We spend so much time judging and criticizing people for who they are that we really don't even get a chance to properly understand who they are. We don't know. So all the time we're spending in judgment and criticism could be used in knowledge acquisition, in mind acquisition. Who is this person? What are they doing? Why do they do what they do? Why do they act the way they act? Not in judgment or criticism, but in recognizance and actually information acquiring. So that way you have an understanding of this mind, of all the thoughts and beliefs that are in it, of the mask and the character they're playing. So when they show us a movie trailer and on training day, nobody thought after they saw that movie trailer on training day with Denzel, nobody thought he was playing a pastor or some kind of priest. They knew he was a villain. They knew he was about that action and something was going to happen, right? So we went to see that because that we understood that that's the mask or the role he was playing. But if we're riding down like, like the guy who got in the car with him that he was training that day, he thought he was one thing and ended up realizing at the end of that day, he was something else. So the longer it takes for you to realize who you're talking to, the more at risk you're, you are. The more you're sitting around worried about a whole bunch of other foolishness, if you don't start paying attention to who you're talking to, to the mind that they have, not in judgment or criticism, you can like something or not, but you have to do that after. After. Not first, not at the same time. After. If you want to be safe, you don't have the privilege of judging and criticizing first. You got to figure out what is. Not whether you like it, not whether you agree, what is? Man, this car is going down the street. They're speeding down the street. They're going too fast. Cool, you don't like that. You can do that when you're looking on the sidewalk. But if you're in the middle of the street and the car is coming too fast, you being in your feelings about them going too fast and deciding you're not going to move is a mistake. It's a sin. It's an error. 
in your thinking. So today, I, we are going to talk about being so that we can become. We're going to have to make some decisions on what we're willing to be first in order to become. We are going to have to learn how to use our feelings properly. Just not a side note, but just a little part of it as far as feelings. Feelings are about something. So, so feelings are not necessarily first, but they're important. But they're about something. And the more in tune you are with yourself, you'll understand what your feelings are about. So when I talk to people about feelings that the people that I'm working with are helping, I say, feelings are like seasoning. If you get out a plate and put all your favorite seasonings on there, and you decide to just start licking the plate or getting a spoon, how is that going to work out for you? All these seasons that you love, you you did, and everything on your food, and can't wait to put salt on it, pepper on it, hot sauce, barbecue sauce, all the things that you like. If there's no food, you're now sick. You're sick of this thing that you like, because seasonings are to put on something. They are not standalone items. You don't just go down aisle like, like, you know what? I'm gonna go shopping. Hey, guess what? I got all the seasonings on the shelf. And somebody's going to be like, man, where's the food? Right? Your, your feelings, your emotions are designed to help season your thoughts, to help put them in perspective, to help increase them, decrease them. They're here to add flavor, to change the flavor. Your, your thoughts are, your feelings are for that. They're not for you to just be pouring on everything, any old type of way, right? So then you put a whole bunch of salt on your plate, a whole bunch of pepper, you just messed up, right? Even if you put it on food, if you put too much on it, it doesn't work. So it matters the order in which we do things. So we have to start making some, some choices today. We're going to have to start deciding whether we're on this side or that side, because playing the fence is not going to make it. So when I say today, yeah, the subscription is over. The trial period is over. Sitting around just like, oh, that was nice. And I even did it on Saturday. It's not even Sunday. I'm going to do it twice this weekend. I'm going to do it one on Saturday. Then I'm going to go to church on Sunday. I'm really doing it this weekend. Now, this is not for that. This is for you to make a decision. Every day your life is on. The clock is on. The clock is on. It's March Madness right now. Look at how many people crying when they got to go home. Look at how many these teams are crying when, when, the, when the dance is up. This is our dance. This is our one shining moment. And we have to start realizing that this, this, is, this is a game to enjoy, but it's not one to take lightly. I just made that up right now. Did you guys catch that? Right? It's a game to enjoy, but not take lightly. Right? We don't have to walk around mad, stressed out, upset, frustrated, and everything like that. But if we're not paying attention, if we don't know the mind, whether it's ours or people we're dealing with, that's all we can do. That's all we have left is frustration, worry, fear, anxiety, and all the other things that come with ignorance, with lack of knowledge about ourselves or other people. We are a mind. We are a consciousness. We're not our mind, meaning we're using our mind like a repository. Like a, like, a, like a bank account, like an account. So we throw all of our thoughts, our habits, our beliefs in this. So that's where, that's where our valuables are, is in our mind, right? That's where our valuables are. That's where our thoughts are, our habits, our beliefs, our patterns. That's where, these, that's where this is, right? So we are, have to, so then, and as a result, this determines what we have as assets in our account. Whether we're rich or poor, whether we have a lot or a little, what it is we're experiencing. So I want to give you a good example of what we're talking about today. All right. Will you put that up, please? The John 20. All right. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use an example, right? Whether it's law, health, history, whatever else it is, I'm always finding things that will show you the truth of something so you can see how to apply it. Okay. So in this story, we have, we have, we have some minds. We have this mind. Now, here's our good old line we started with. What did I say at the beginning? We're going to have to start making decisions what side of the line we're on. 
And you're going to see an example of that in this story. So in this story, Jesus, which is a type of mind, it's a personification of mind. Yes. No, I just want you to note that the screen is sharing, so you are smaller. That's fine. Okay. So there is a, so Jesus is a personification of mind. It's a type of thinking. This mind has a set of thoughts, habits, and beliefs like everyone else does. But I want you to see the difference between this person's mind and other people's mind. So if you read along, right, it says, you know, afterward, Jesus appeared again, you know, to his disciples at the sea and whatever. So now you have Simon, Peter, right, Thomas, Nathaniel, and two other, uh, Nathaniel and two other disciples. So you have Jesus on this side of the line and you have five people on the other side of the line. You have a line. You have this mind on this side of the line. Then on this side of the line, you have these minds, these minds. There's five minds on this side of the line. So these five minds say, at night, they say, um, we're going out to fish. And the other four, when he said that, the other four went with them. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. So five people are out here all night. Five people out here all night. This mind, so these five minds are out here all night. This one mind is like, all right, peace, see you later. So early the next morning, this mind, the Jesus minds stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was him. And he said to them, friends, you haven't got anything yet? Do you don't have any fish? Don't you have any fish? One person asked the question, five people said, what did, give me, a, uh, I need a volunteer. He asked him a question. Five people answer, I mean, five people answer, and they said what? No. No. So five people went out and said no. All night. They said they were out there all night. So then he said, okay. He said, um, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were able to haul the net in. Uh, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. So read that six verse, I think it's your yeah, the six verse to yourself when he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Now think about what that's actually saying. They were out there all night. Volunteer, I need one. What did he say? What did he say to do? To throw your net on the right side of the boat. Okay, I need it on the right side of the boat. Yes, question. Go ahead, Ikea. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't realize I was not still muted. Okay. Um, I was going to say throw your net on the right side of the boat, but that is a lot of metaphysical and spiritual principles in going on the right side. That is absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Because if you, if you, not to digress too far, but if you go off, right, and you say, okay, how many fish did he catch? They don't say it in this one, right? But he caught, they caught, when they put the right side, they caught 153. One plus five is six, six plus three is nine. Nine in metaphysics, metaphysics, and nine in metaphysics is consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's consciousness. So, and thank you for that. So, it's nine. So that he caught, they caught one hundred and fifty-three in another chapter. That's what they talked about. So they said, throw. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. Okay, I need another volunteer. What did he not say? What did he not say to do? What did he, he just said, throw to the other side. 
What else could he have said that he didn't say? Could have been a whole lot. He could have given the mother just instructions. He could have said, you know, grab some reels, jump out and get them with your hands. Okay. But he gave some simple instructions. That's no, that's great. Um, this is it's important. Everybody, this is how we learn. Participate. There's no, there's no right or wrong. There's truth, right? So we have to learn sometimes by the right and the wrong how to get to the truth, right? Anybody else? What did he? What didn't he say? He didn't say to cast the net to the front of the boat or to the back of the boat. Cool. All right. So we could go on and on forever to get there. Did he say, let's, and that's right too. He literally said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. They were out there all night. Does the right, if you're in a boat and you're on this side and you're on this side, do you mean to tell me in that short of a space, there's everything on this side and nothing on that side? He didn't say move, go down, go down further. He didn't say turn around. He didn't say, he didn't say move physically. He didn't say move. He didn't tell them to go somewhere else. He didn't tell them that they had to go up the lake or down the lake, get out the boat and get back in the lake. He didn't, so... So when they put their net on the other side, what did they move? What did they move? What does the net represent? What does he represent? What does the net represent? Their belief, their faith. Say it again. Their belief, their faith. What, but what does he, what does this person represent? Jesus, um, what is the person, huh? I, I would say it represented their consciousness. Yeah. Um, their mind and their consciousness. That yes. When you see things the right way, that's um, what happens. That's exactly right. He's trying to get them to change their mind. He's trying to get them to change what they're thinking. From that side of it, they were out there all night. Now, we've talked about this couple different times if you're out all night doing something everybody thinks that's a good thing because you're out there getting it what do we call that what do they call that grinding that's there nice. we go we're back on this one again grinding okay you can take it down so they can see thank you grinding yeah but they were out there all night isn't that what they tell you to do don't they tell you to grind but then they tell you to grind, be out there all night. You got to get it. You got to take radical action. You got to, you can't just think about something and it happened. You got to go ahead and make it happen. Well, they were out there all night. What else, how, what else could they have done? Should they got, should they have went down in the water and pulled it out by the, by hand? Should they have, uh, should they got in the water with the fish? They were out there all night and there was five of them. And if you look back at these people in the story, historically in the story, most of these people, if not all of them, were fishermen by trade. By trade. This is what they did for a living. There was no Whole Foods. There was no Taco Bell. There was no Uber Eats. Was nobody getting delivered. Nothing. So everybody is out here eating. So when they said, we're going to go get some fish, this was probably the thing they were most comfortable with, most confident with, most familiar with, this is what they do. This is how they eat every day. Yeah, has her hand up. Yes. Um, what you're saying about the number, the 153, which totals up to the number nine, which is the number of consciousness. Also, mm -hmm. there was five of them. So mm -hmm. on numerology, I think that's the number of man, five, mm -hmm. the number five. Mm -hmm. So it was five represents man and his consciousness. Mm -hmm. And he had to go on the right side of his consciousness to see mm -hmm. things the right way or the clear way. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yes, you're right. So and we'll, is, there's a we'll lot of people in the story. Yes. And that's why a lot of people have a, a lot of people, I'm just going to use it this way, connotatively. A lot of people, a lot of people have a, a lot of people have a God they don't know because they are reading a book they don't understand. So they think 
So the whole book is designed to show you the truth about you. It's your autobiography. All of these people are mine. They are personifications of mine. This person over here, Jesus had a different mind than them. He didn't have a different body, more hands, more legs. He wasn't out there. That, that's not the difference between them. The difference between them is their consciousness. They went out and they believe everything is out. They believe you have to grind, that you have to be out here all night. They believe that you have to do all these things. This is what the human consciousness does. This is our set of beliefs and patterns that we spread amongst each other. That we think everything has to be hard. Everything has to, you have to grind. You got to really want it. You got to sweat. You got to do this or that. And literally, he just said, put it, take it from the left side of your, to your point, metaphysically, right? I, I don't get too deep into that on the whole thing with everybody because it's, it takes time for everyone to understand. So I try to keep it base level. But the left side of your mind is your human conscious carnal mind. It's your human mind that reads, counts, adds, says cross the street, don't cross the street, pay your taxes. That's that type of mind. Your right side of your mind at the highest level is your sensory mind, your imaginative mind. It is your God mind. It's the, it's, the, it's the place where intuition comes from, the voice within you that is the real you talking to the physical mass persona character name you. That, that's where this lies on the right side. So he's saying, cast your net on the right side. Bring your thinking from the limitation to where the abundance and the ease is. But this mind, the Jesus mind said, I am my father are one. It's not me that does the work. It's my father in me. So it's your I am, it's your consciousness. Whatever your thoughts, your beliefs, and your habits are is your consciousness. And so your consciousness now is acting in physical form. It's acting. It's your personality, it's acting. So that is what is that is what is governing your life. So just trying and being out all night, staying up all night, grinding all night. I gotta call 50,000 people in order to get one sale. Do you have a question? No, yes. You have put in, her, in the chat, your I am. Yes, that is absolutely correct. That's what we're talking about, right? And so it's only one hour a week. I mean, literally you guys have no idea how many different how many different sermons I got if like day by day from, from today, from after I get off this call to the next time I talk to you, I have 80,000 different sermons. I have so many things I want to tell you all, right? Because, because if we could just learn how to think, our lives would change. Literally, that's why I brought you the story. If you could just learn how to think, you would take your net off the left side, put it on the right side, and you'd have fish like that, bursting your whole net up. You couldn't even pull them up. You stand out here all night working your butt off and there's five of you and you got nothing. One dude comes in and be like, man, what you guys doing out here? You've been out here all night? Man, put your thing on the right side. Like, you know how somebody who's good at something just tells you to do something and you're like, man, come on, man, I just started. Why are you talking to me like, like you know, like, come on, man, that, that you've been doing this for, for 20 years or whatever else it is, right? They just talk to you like you're supposed to know. Like, you didn't, you didn't know that? Right. But in that in in that person's mind in the Jesus mind in the personification of that mind, it's that easy and that simple and the personification of five other people's minds. So you grind it all night. So you got all night. You're out here. you got 10 set of hands. You got 10 hands and and you're grinding and you still got nothing. You still have nothing to show for it. And what I'm and so this is what I mean when I start drawing this line. We have to start figuring out what side of the line we want to be on. Because on this side of the line, there's going to, you have a whole lot of people with you. There's going to be people willing to grind with you, go sleep out, stay out all night with you. You guys, you know, everybody knows Black Friday. They out there for how long? Days, two days, three days, out all, all night before it opens. They out all night. They will want to do it, right? How many people in a sport, they're out there tailgating? They out there before the game start. So when we want something, we're out there before. But when we come to this thing at seven o'clock, it's butt naked empty. Yeah, it got quiet. Everybody late. Everybody. Okay, yeah, hold on one second. I get everybody. And I ain't mad because I ain't no pastor. I ain't no preacher. This ain't no church in my best English. This ain't no church. I ain't mad at that. That's not what I mean, literally. I'm not here for you to follow me. I ain't here to be, that's not what I am. I'm just here. I'm giving you what I was looking for and still am looking for and learning. 
I'm giving you what I've learned and am consistently living. So when I talk to you, it's not out of authority. It's only passion, right? Because I'm living what I'm telling you. Like I ain't out here selling you something and I'm on the other side. No, I'm out here realizing this ain't working for me either. <laughs> this didn't work for me either, but I still want something. I still got to figure out how to get it. So in this mind, I realized, well, wait a minute, how is this cat over here doing everything? and not walking around mad and up all night, and I'm up all night and I ain't got nothing, right? So then we're like, oh, it's racism, it's sexism. I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. Well, you know, uh, you know, in the ghetto or in the this or that, it's like, okay, but a, a bullet ain't racist. Death ain't either. Taxes ain't either. As, after a while, it's like, we gotta figure out how to win this game. And we have used everything but our mind to do it. The only time we use our mind is to complain, to worry, to blame, or to talk about somebody. Have a time, right? We're not using it to actually for us, right? We're not using it for us, right? So we in a we will get some to buy some. We'll be out there early to go out to a football game, entertain ourselves. We'll be out there early, but to actually learn something, boy, we act like we doing the we doing the teacher a favor. Well, I'm in here. I'm I showed up, didn't I? Yeah, but you're not, you got your headphones on. Yeah, but I'm here, ain't I? Yeah, but you're in the back seat. Yeah, but but you understand, you got you don't understand. It's hard out here. Well, you talking to your friends, passing notes, right? But it's because the way we've been educated in life, we think it's our, our job to show up and just have somebody talk to us and give us all the answers and do everything. But we don't learn like that and we don't own any information like that. All we can do is regurgitate and repeat. But we don't own the information well enough to live on it to make to make it make a difference in our lives. Question, yes. Sorry. Go ahead, Ikea. All right. So um everything that you're saying, um, Coach Lucky. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so resonates with the experience that I've been having over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um I'm with Vero and we're in the MMU together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're learning all these wonderful things. And a lot of it has to do with the grind, as you just spoke about. Mm -hmm. um, do so many posts, get so much content together, mm -hmm. um, do so many lives, you know. So there's all this stuff about grinding. And I have the best intentions to do those things, but life catches up and I don't get to them. And so I started doing this class every Sunday. And I didn't send out the notices till six hours before the class started. Mm -hmm. um, I have two YouTube posts, one Instagram post, and 26 followers. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of that. I was like, whoa, 22 people are following me. Mm -hmm. So it's nowhere near the numbers that I'm taught that you're supposed to do if you're doing a class. But then when I show up there, there's like 40, 50 people on the call. Mm -hmm. I don't, where these people come from it's just like what you're saying just cast your net to the right side because what I have been taught is intuitively and spiritually just trust mm -hmm. and so by just trusting not so much figuring out what the grind is and I didn't do all the content and all of those things it's just trusting whoever's going to show up is going to show up I'm not going to worry about it and each week I'm doing the classes and that's how many people show up and you know, I still have two YouTube posts and one Instagram post. I haven't even had any chance to put any content up there. So just like what you're saying, you know, we're given this kind of erroneous belief that you have to do this grind, you have to do it. And because everybody else is doing that, you think that's the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. But um, I have found it differs just like what you're saying. If you cast your net on the right side, which basically trust in your God mind, trust in your spirit. Mm -hmm. work so mm -hmm. i so resonate with everything you're saying that's, well, thank that's you. i had oh well thank you i appreciate it thank you for your participation i appreciate everyone participating and so one there, there's a there's a team out here that i work with it's a girls basketball team and um the, the coach and i are really, really good friends and uh and they have this thing where it's like accountability Everybody comes up with this word. And I, some of these words just make me so ill in my mind. They make me almost sick. I almost have to be hospitalized after I hear it. Because the way people are using these words and thinking about things, it's like, okay, let's just say, let's just say what you mean is cool. 
But if you turn that and apply it over here, would you need that same thing? So the word accountability. Now, I think I've said this out here before, right? How many of us, when we're 15, 16, 17, going to a, you know, uh, 18, 19 college, you know, going to a party, going to a dance, going to something we enjoy. Does anybody remember having to hold anybody accountable in those times? Like, girl, you better be accountable to show with me to this party. Girl, you better be accountable out here when we uh, go do this or that. Man, homie, you better be accountable when we go out here. You better be accountable when we go out on this date. You better be accountable when we go see this. Like, all the things, you better be accountable when we go to this football game. You better be accountable when we go on this girl's trip to Vegas. Nobody got to be accountable for anything that they enjoy. And so I stayed in my, I thought to myself one day, well, then why does, why do we have to hold ourselves accountable for something that we supposedly, and I asked this question to the girls team. I was like, so you guys throw this word around and you guys really think you guys are like epic scholars with it. You guys think you're out here walking on water with this thing. So I'm like, mm, if everybody wants to be here, right. And this is not like uh, some kind of community service. This isn't some kind of, uh, you know, just some kind of donation group. If everybody wants to be here, well, if everybody wants to be here, what are you holding each other accountable for? If I'm excited to be at the party, nobody got to hold me accountable to dance or try to talk to somebody or just do something because I wanted to be here. So what are we holding each other accountable for? Like, I'm trying to figure out what you guys mean by this word. What do you mean by that? And so everybody sat there and they're like, well, I'm like, I'm just saying, like, if you go out with your girls to go eat or go out with your friends to go eat or you go to do something you really enjoy doing, where's the accountability in going to the movies? Where is that? Where does that come from? Why do we have to, why do all of a sudden if there's no accountability for the joy, why is there accountability for this us thing, for this other thing? Why is that necessary? And then if there's no accountability necessary for here, but there is over here, then what's the difference between this and that? And it's rhetorical. I'm gonna give you the answer. I'm not even gonna wait on anybody. Don't worry, you don't have to raise your hand because you probably won't tell the truth or don't know it. And I'm gonna tell you right now. Here we go. You wanna hear it? Here you go. It's because most people don't like what they're doing. Most people need what they're doing. Most people have convinced themselves they should be doing what they're doing. But most people that are entrepreneurs are almost like uh, policemen and teachers. It's a fallback profession for most of us. It's like, you know what? I got a job, but I need to go on and get this little side money because I got taxes coming. I got three kids. I need to be doing this. I, so you're not really doing it because you want to do it or because you love it. It's because you look around and you're like, well, that's something I can do right now. To be a teacher, do you, do you, there's a book called The Smartest Kids in the World. And it's, 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 it's years old now, but it was written by a reporter. And it was basically talking about all the, all the different nations of the world and how Certain countries like South Korea, Finland, Denmark, a lot of places raise their GDP, their gross domestic product. They change the status and the direction of their country literally by making an effort to educate their kids. South Korea has no natural resources. Nobody has anybody ever heard anyone say, I want a vacation to South Korea? Anybody? Right? But guess what comes out of South Korea? LG, Hyundai, and a thousand other things. And who do you think are making those things? 80-year-olds? No, they're 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds. So, so years ago, when they decided to change their country's future, they went back to educate their children. And they may be in a teacher like being a doctor, like being a lawyer. They are literally on that level. They have to, they have to be in the top percent of their class. Over here, do you realize that only three out of 10 teachers graduated in the top third of their class? And you got them teaching your kids math, and they are a history major. But they, they, could, they didn't realize they couldn't do anything with history until they got out, and now they're broke, and they're like, well, all I got to do is get a little teaching certificate, six weeks worth of training, and I can teach a class, and then you wonder why your kid come home and can't count, because you got a history major teacher. Then you got somebody who's just in it for the money. Not that they're a bad person, but you need money. So you're doing like, well, what can I do right now? So you can be a cop with no college degree, a teacher with one that doesn't even have to. You can be an art major teaching science. They need teachers like you're working off lack you're working off need everybody got to eat that ain't lack everybody has to eat right it doesn't matter what you are how rich you are a billionaire that ain't lack that's called hunger everybody has it right so what happens is it becomes a fallback thing so now you have all these kids 
who are being taught by people who half of which don't didn't even plan on ever being this. An entrepreneur is the same thing for most people. They're only doing it because they're like, well, it's something I can do right now as I am. But it's not something they want to do or ever planned on doing. They're just trying to make a little extra money or they don't know what else they want to do. So now they need to be held accountable to do all these posts and all that because half the time they either don't want to do it, don't even like doing what they're doing. They're not even selling what they even know anything about or want to know anything about. They just want the money. And so they're out here all night with their net. They're out here with their night, with their net all night. Right. And now the top, now you get words when you, when you get words like need, then you get words that come under that willpower, grinding, uh, dedication in the sense of the way they're used. You're like, I, I use real world stuff because we've all been there. You know how when you're, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're, when you're dating somebody and you're excited and they're like, and your, four, your boy calls you, your girl calls you, and you're like, oh, you're going out again? Does anybody call that? Does anybody say, man, you dedicated? Anybody say that? Man, that's dedication. No, it's inspiration. It's excitement. I'm out here. As much as I can go or get, I'm, I'm here. Everybody's doing that at the beginning. Nobody's dedicated. Nobody's grinding. Nobody's using willpower to go out. You're not, you're not forcing yourself to put that cologne on. You're not forcing yourself to go ahead and stop the cap. Like, we got to stop all this. We, like, seriously, we're using these words synonymously and connotatively. And so we're messing them all up. The meaning of them, what our focus is, what our intentions are. We're just throwing things out, right? So what we're talking about here is making a conscious decision about what we think, how we think, so that we're not out here all night grinding, doing stuff we hate because we think we got to do that to make money. If you want the money, right? So we're going to get into this now. Okay. I need a volunteer. Let's talk about it. Money. If you can't see it, it says money. Money, money, the song, money, money, uh, money. All right, I need a volunteer. Who's up? I got you. I got thank you. Tiffany. Tiffany, thank you. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, man, if I hold my breath, sometimes I might pass out. You know you be making us nervous, coach. Yeah, you know you right. make us <laughs> That's right. That's right. That is right. That is right, because guess what, right? Like, because this is this is practice. So in the game, when you get off this phone, you have, the game is on, and now you got something to kill them with. You got some nice moves to work with. You got some action you can give instead of standing around, right, looking like, oh shoot, they shooting, right? So <laughs> money. Let's just stop the cap and let's talk about what it is for real, so we can actually understand how to get it, how to keep it, and everything else. Money. Tiffany, what is... Now, and you're right. I tell everybody I work with, like, when I ask you a question, like, think about what you say, because you're talking to me. You're not talking to your friends. You're not talking to... You think about what you say, because I'm thinking. So you need to be thinking. Doesn't have to be, you don't have to be right, but don't just say what you are used to saying. Think when you talk to me, right? Money. Tiffany, what is what is money... What is money? Not necessarily just to you, but to you, but what is money? What what do you think that is? Money yes. is a tool to buy what I need and want. Okay. You said it's a tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is a spatula? A kitchen tool. It's a tool. So then what does money and spatula, what does money and a spatula have to do with each other? One had, what will have to do with each other? What do they have in common? They can both help us get to a desired outcome. Okay, so you're saying it's help. And who is us? Meaning it's like you, me, I, us, right? Yes. So the person. So it's to help the person. Okay. So if you gave a 
somebody physically big enough, but not really aware enough. Yeah, let's just say a a, a four year old. If, if you gave a four year old a spatula, what would they do with it? Probably like beat it, like. <laughs> so so, it, but it is still. But isn't it still a tool? It is still a tool. They're just not oh. using it properly. But they're not using it properly. So then if a person is not using a tool properly, what does that say about them? They don't understand the tool. They don't understand. So if money is a tool and spatula is a tool and we don't have it or enough of it, what are we saying? We don't understand the tool. We don't understand it. Now everybody's out here working all night for something they don't understand. Yeah. What do you do if you on what do you do in high school, right? When when you have a test and you know and you look at the test and they they slide across the desk and you look at it and you just look at all the answers and it might as well be Chinese. When you look at it and you say, I I know that I know I don't know. And <laughs> there ain't no way I'm gonna know in this time. So you have two options essentially. When you're looking at that paper, what 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 do you think your options are? What are you going to do? Guess and pray? Huh? Guess and pray? Ba well, guess is one. What's the other thing people do? You think it's pray? What's the other? Or, what do, what do, okay, what some do people, people do? might cheat. Some people might cheat. Yeah. they. So you guess? You cheat? Right? They don't even do it. They don't even try. Yeah. What is a word for that? Give up? That's two words. Kind of. Um, yeah, same, it's the same thing. Quit. Oh, yes, quit. Now, I want everybody to take a look at these three words. Guess, cheat, or quit. Take a look at, take a look at life in the world around and people around. Don't you see how many people are doing these three things? Yes. Didn't you see the five people in the boat? Yes. They were doing one of them. They were guessing because obviously they didn't know or they thought they knew and realized they didn't, right? Or you can't cheat. So then the only other option then is to quit. Or you stay, or what else you do then? Last famous one, grind. I'm just gonna stay out here till it happens. I'm gonna stay up all night, stay out all night, stay up, stay out. I'm a stretch hydrate, I got Gatorade with me. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna be out here. These are essentially your four, the four options of ignorance. <laughs> I just coined that right now, so don't nobody try to steal it. I just made it up right now. Do not try to steal it. I'm putting it on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I didn't get a t-shirt. That's it. These are the four options. These are the four outcomes of ignorance. Yes, okay. okay, I'll get to you. They're either guessing, cheating, quitting or grinding in life. But the other mind did one thing, they just accomplished. The five over here that were ignorant were caught in this group. It doesn't matter if it's one of them, all four of them, but this is where you are. This is your circle, this is your matrix. Knowledge is the only thing that sets you free. The truth, knowing the truth, but you have to, you have to know the truth, you have to know. Right? And then apply it, obviously. But this is this is your matrix, the matrix of ignorance. Because the mind that was on the other side of that line said, man, put your net on the other side, man. You didn't have to wait, because would you say pray? The, but even the person who, who was here praying all the time, so to speak, didn't say pray. Did you guys catch that? Because I know there's people driving, there's people sitting, people, but did you catch it? The person who came here talking about praying didn't say pray. They said, put your net on that side. You don't have to pray, turn around, be a good person, tithe, uh, all the things that everybody's telling you to do. Just put your net over here. Change your mind. Just make a different choice. Change your mind. You have to go the other side of the line. So these are the, this is the, the four chambers of death, of ignorance right here. Guessing, cheating, quitting, or grinding. If you're doing any or all of these, you are lacking understanding to some degree. 
Not completely, not totally, but to some degree. So then you need to fill that with a different mind, with different knowledge. That's what that person represented, different knowledge. That's why it wasn't the instructions that that person gave wasn't drastic. It was just like, put it on the other side. Go to the other side, right? It doesn't have to be that deep or that serious, but it is that deep or that serious when you're starving, then you start making up anything, right? Then you start cheating. Then you start grinding. You start, then you end up quitting because you don't wore yourself out. So a lot of people that are doing all this posts and all this other stuff, it's it's not, it's not, there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem with it is because you're the reason you're doing it. You're not doing it because that's the right thing to do. That's what you believe you're doing. A, because that's what you're told. B, because everyone else is doing it. And so you're like, well, I ain't got my own idea. I got, I, they told me and they look like they're doing it. So I'm going to do it. And half the people that are successful, I got a whole bunch of friends that are successful. I asked them some questions. They can't even really tell me how it happened. They just glad it did. So they keep it moving. So then if they told me, and so my boy, one of my boys got a Wraith, a Rolls Royce Wraith, five hundred some thousand dollar car. He come pick me up. I'm like, man, how'd you do it? He'd be like, man, I stood on my head for eight hours. I at least, I would consider it. I would consider, I probably won't do it. But for one second, I'd be like, well, was it on carpet? Did you have like a helmet on? I mean, I'm just saying I'm willing to consider given the outcome here, I'm willing to consider it. Anyway, all right, let me, let me, uh, cause I'm gonna move on. So let me get a uh, answer to his question. You have me cracking up over here. I forgot my question, but <laughs> um, what you're saying, um, and I do see it, is that we do get caught up, and I think you said the right word, we get caught up into this matrix, and we believe that's truer than what our own, as you call it, the God mind or our intuition is telling us to do. So I, I just love what everything that you're saying and it's really funny the way you're delivering it. So I completely forgot my question because you had me laughing so hard. <laughs> All right, well, come back when you know, and I'll stop right there so you could ask. Okay. Okay, so now, is there anybody else? We're good. Okay, money. So money, we understand now, according to the great philosopher Tiffany, that it is a tool. We understand that. We also are now learning to understand how to use this tool because it is a tool. And it doesn't matter whether it's a spatula or money, it's a tool to help us do something Right. But if we don't know how to use that tool, we can now shoot one. You couldn't you couldn't use it or you wouldn't use it properly. But number two, if you didn't know what it was, would you even buy it? Would it even be with a four year old even buy that in the house? Would they even ask for that? No, because they don't know what it is, what it's for. So they wouldn't even ask for. it. So money is a tool. But in order to work that tool, you have to be aware. You have to know something. So then knowing is a form of what? Somebody, you know, I'm gonna call on somebody. So I can see some pictures up here. I will call, I will call on somebody. Don't make it you, just answer. Understanding. Understanding, okay. Understanding is a form of what? Good, I like seeing knowledge. everybody thinking, good, huh? Knowledge, right. knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge is a form of what? Practice. Practice? Experience. Yeah, kind of. But these are knowing. all. Huh? I think someone said experience. Knowledge is a form of knowing. Yeah. Now, what what's else what's... is not? What are, but all these three roll up under something. Experience. Experience, okay. And, but an experience is a is a form of what? These are all right, but these action. are subsets, huh? Action. Action. Okay, but you take you take action based on your. Does it do any dead people take action? Decision. Experience. Nope. Do decision. Any dead people, belief. Mm, okay. Do any dead people have beliefs? No. So what is it? What do you have to have before you have a belief? Before you can take action. A thought. Before you have a thought, what do you have to be? Alive. Alive. Conscious. Alive. Conscious. Jesus Christ. Alive. It's alive. Alive. Come on, look. Don't do us like that, look. Come on. Right? Don't do us like that. It is. It is. So here's the important thing. Here's the answer. It is alive. It is consciousness.
Money is a tool. It's an idea. But it, but it is money here are dollars. Other places, they're yen, they're lira, they're pesos, they are uh, Deutschmarks, they're a thousand different things. Back in the day, they were cattle, right? Some people will trade land, right? These are all forms of wealth. Money, so when you are conscious of being, when you're conscious, you can take action. You can have experiences. You can increase in knowledge, understanding, knowing, knowledge, knowledgeable, doing, but you have to be conscious before you do any of those things. So money is a is, an, is another part of your experience that you use for your experience. But your consciousness will dictate how much of it you have, how you get it, how hard it is for you to get. So when the 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 personification, the Jesus mind, and the five people's mind, they had different states of consciousness. The mind, when I said you're not meeting a person, you're meeting a mind. That on this side, these people's minds said they have to stay out all night. Their consciousness, their relationship with money is all night, all hands on deck, and maybe we'll get something. This person's thing was, just put it over here. Your consciousness is what you have to have to express your action, to have experiences, to be able to retain knowledge and understanding. So your, your consciousness, the consciousness of being wealthy. Wealth is a consciousness. Money is an expression of your consciousness, of your wealth consciousness. How much do I have? How hard is it to make? What do I have to do to get it? This person over here said, just put your net on the right side. And they got fish right then. The people who were out there the night before said, we got to be out here all night, possibly, maybe. Let's take a bunch of them with us. And we still ain't got nothing in my best image. Wealth is a consciousness. It expresses itself in what we call money. But it won't express itself to us in America in yen. What can we do with that? In pesos, what can we do with that here? It's going to express itself in ways that are relevant to us as the individual where we are. It's a tool, but it's a but we use the tool based on our knowledge, our consciousness, what we know. So a four-year-old wouldn't know what to do with a spatula, but guess what? A four-year-old wouldn't even buy one. They wouldn't know what to do with it. It would never occur to them that you can use this for that. It's a consciousness. And it expresses itself in ways that are directly related to your consciousness, to your relationship, to what your thoughts, habits, beliefs, and patterns are in relationship to money. You have that in money. It's no different with health. It's an expression of you. If you say, I'm sick, that doesn't mean your wife or your kids are sick. You're sick. If you say, I'm broke, that's a reflection of you, just like you being sick. It's a reflection of you. What you are is a mind. A mind, what makes a mind alive, right? Of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, is a consciousness. So you cannot be conscious of being healthy and be sick. Doesn't work, it doesn't work that way. You can't put an orange seed in the ground and get watermelons. You can't do that. What you are getting is what you're planting. What you are planting is according to what you're aware of. Money is a, it is an idea. It's a tool that is used based on your consciousness and your level of consciousness. What do you think this is to you? How do you think this has to be for you? Is it easy for you to get? What does it say in the book? Beloved, beloved I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So the, the, the person that everyone praises called God, let's just say, said, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. It didn't say, I wish above all things that you pray. It didn't say, I wish above all things that you get over it. It didn't say, I wish above all things that you just be happy with what you got. It didn't say, uh, you know, just be a good person. It said, I wish above all things. So if you had somebody you loved and you left a will for them and you said, hey, 
I want you, if you don't know anything else, I want you to know these things above everything else. I want you to know these things. And in this case, it was three. I want you to prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So then you're, if, if this is a person you believe in and a book you believe in, let's just say, then that should be something we're doing because that is wanted for us more and above all other things. But how can you be in good health if you're up all night? Anybody say, anybody stay up all night and be like, yeah, man, I'm glad I did it. I feel better today than I did yesterday. Does, does anybody say, man, you know what? The harder it is, the better I feel. Does any, like, these things are not even, these things are not even something we'd say if we put it in any other context. Right? Just think about how we say something differently. All right, give me another volunteer. Somebody say something. Yell, scream. Go ahead, brother. Go yes, ahead. sir. Okay. Whoever it is. Here, here we go. When something, when you get better, when you get better at something, what does it get? Stronger. Get better. More huh? green. Somebody. When you get better, you get at, better something, at something. When, yes. You when you improve something. at something. When you get better at something, what does that thing become to you? What does it get? Easier. 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 Well, guess what? The person that walked by and said, Yeah, you've been out here all night and you've got nothing. I mean, the question was rhetorical. <laughs> He's like, You're walking by, like, You guys ain't got nothing yet? It was rhetorical. They were the ones struggling. In that state of mind, struggle exists. In the other state of mind, it doesn't. It was easy to that state of mind. When you get better at anything in your own state of mind, it gets easier. So then why, if we started off doing something, let's just say we believe we had to grow out all night and grind and everything else. If we're still doing that five years later, are we better at it? Why do you think people love, love AI and automation? Because it makes things easier. Because you don't got to do this all on your own by yourself. We found that is a sign of consciousness. That's a sign of intelligence. That's the ability to say, hmm, how can I make this thing easier that I'm doing? I can't necessarily make flipping burgers easier. Once I get good at it, I still have to put the time in. So then What's another way I can make this easier? Oh, I'll create something. That means I don't have to do it. I'll create a robot to do it. Here you go. You get better. When you start thinking higher in your mind, you get better. Think, you don't, you're not out of here wearing your butt out. You wear out your behind because you won't use your mind. You will wear your butt out because you won't use your mind. We will, we will literally tear our body up because we won't discipline our mind. We'll go on a diet. We'll fast. We will not eat for three days. We'll go jog 15 miles. We'll be out here killing ourselves in hot suits with leg weights on. We'll be at, we'll be doing all kinds of stuff trying to get right in the body. And the mind is insane. We will spend $500 at Whole Foods talking about I'm about to eat good. I'm about to eat healthy and go home and just watch anything, listen to anybody. Just, just, just. Just turn on Lil Wayne and just turn on Jay Z and I'm cooking the bacon soda in the pot and you over here eating organic pineapples. What kind of fool are you? That's literally like, you know what? I don't want to catch this COVID, so I got this mask on and then smoke a cigarette. <laughs> hey, I I ain't got COVID, but you got cancer. Yeah, but cancer, but COVID is contagious. What kind of fool are you? Like neither one of them are necessary. You don't need to have either one of them, but you substituting which one you gonna sign up for? Hey, you want the COVID line or the cancer line? Well, that that you know that COVID. That's just ugh, let me just go on. Come on, man! Like this is just it, like no, no. We don't have to choose one or the other. We can say no, thank you to both. Right. Put in the chat, teach. 
wear your butt out because you won't use your mind. Yeah. And I just got four on muscles with that one. But like this is this is it. We 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 basically we basically abuse our body because we won't discipline our mind. We will abuse our body because we won't discipline our mind. We'll have in the gym lifting all kinds of weights. We'll be doing all kinds of diet plans. We'll be out here working all night, you know, wearing our body out and all kinds of other stuff. Do you know how many people have died from overworking? It shortened Nikola Tesla's life. The guy who drive the guy who, you know, the, the car's named after, and I got one and I like it. And so the dude's electricity game was on, right? But he did it. Um, was it um um what's his first name? But the guy, the one of the partners who formed Rolls Royce. I think it was, was that, is that Henry Royce? But the guy, his last name was Royce. There's another guy named Rolls and his last name was Royce. And he basically, he basically died from overworking. There's countless people who die from overworking because they thought that's what it took to express, to express themselves. And to, and it's not, it's not. There, the, my point is, is that I'm trying to get us now to understand that there is a line like we started with. There's a line and we're going to have to pick which side we're on because we can't be on both sides at the same time. Like I said, being from Southern California, there's blood and crisps and I've seen a lot of things and I know everything is possible, but I ain't seen neither one of them sitting up there sharing a beer at the park. When they see each other, it's pretty much on site in Southern California. It's just where we're from. It's just what it is. If you get caught slipping in the wrong neighborhood, that's your problem. And I hope you can run or drive fast or one of the two, but there ain't nothing to talk about. There's a line here in life. There's a line. I don't know if you can see it, but it's black, big, the line in the middle. It's not that straight. Don't judge me. But we have to figure out what side of this line we're going to be on. Are we going to be on the side, right? That grinds, that quits. That cheats, that uh, what's uh, guesses, that has to choose one or the other as far as like, because on this side, when you say choose on this side, on this side, in the beginning, it said, in the beginning of the book, it said there was darkness. And God said, let there be light. So this higher level of thinking said, well, I already got this. I think I want something different. So I'm going to create light. So now I didn't have to choose one of those over the other. I just created another. Now I have both. So last night, a couple about three hours ago, it was still dark. It was night. So to speak. And now it's day. So we get both. On this side, you have to choose. You have to choose whether you stay up all night and grind so you can make some money. And then when your kids and your family wake up, now you sleep. So you could choose money or your family. You could choose money or your health. You can choose anything you want to choose, but, uh, but you're never going to win on this side with that choice. Over here, choosing is acquiescence. You're giving up something to get something, but you're not solving a problem if you're creating another one. You're broke. So now you go out there and grind. Now you're not broke, but you're broke. You're broke with your family. Now, cool, you saved them. Now, but now you're never home. Ever. And when you are home, you sleep. Or irritated because you're so tired. And so they're looking forward to seeing you and you're in a bad mood. After a while, they stop looking forward to seeing you. You become like some of the other uh, people I know <laughs> that have money, whether it's athletes, entertainers, or whatever else. And they come home and they're literally in the way. Everybody's like, oh, here he is. Oh, here she is. Nobody want to see you. Because you traded one for the other because you thought that's what you had to do. Right. And so here, when we're when we are learning, we're realizing there's a different way. There's a better way. Right. The better the truth is not religious. It's not denominational. It's not uh, sexist and racist. And it's not. It's the truth. It ain't for you or against you. It is. You can either get on the right side or get on the wrong side. Roll or get rolled over. Have justice. On the side of the law, you have justice and peace. On the wrong side of the law, no justice, no peace. If you're on the wrong side of truth, you will have no justice and no peace. You'll be up all night grinding and still have nothing.
right? One minus one is zero. I got rich. I lost my family. Where are you at? Zero. I got rich. I lost my health. Where are you at? Zero. One plus one is two. I got rich correctly. So I got rich and my family. Now I got two. I got rich and I have my health. Now I got two. But you can only do that on one side of the line. The other side, this side of the line is where everybody, most of the population is. It is crowded and it is a hot mess. It's a hot mess, right? So when we're talking about is consciously choosing a consciousness that produces our desire with so that we can have darkness and light. We don't have to choose one or the other. We can say, hmm, I want to, you know, I already have a family. Cool. I'm cool there. But I want to, I really want to increase my income. Well, to increase your income, you have to increase your consciousness. You have to increase your concept of yourself. You have to improve your relationship with it to have more of it, to see yourself with it differently than you see yourself with it now. You have to, you have to establish a consciousness of having more money, of being the person that has more money. That's the net. Your net is your consciousness. On the left side of humanity, they tell you got to grind, quit, cheat, steal, rob, you know, plot, free, do everything else. That's on the left side. On the right side is, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Your leaf is always green and your tree never ceases to bear fruit. Everything you set your hand to prospers. Right? You're not anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Right? Fear not. Right? There is a different, there is a different way to approach life. And this isn't, this isn't, this is not. I'm not converting you to anything. You don't have to be anything, uh, wear any special outfit. This is literally governed by your consciousness, by what you are aware of being. And based on your self-concept, what you are aware of being, you have a relationship with everything outside of that. First thing being your body. Your body is the first thing outside of you. Do you have a relationship with that? Do you have a relationship with money, your friends, family, neighborhood, health, everything you have a relationship with based on your own point of being your own self-concept your own place and if you want to if you want to have a better relationship it starts with you it starts with increasing your consciousness or changing your consciousness taking it from one side to the other changing what you are believing thinking and feeling that's what that story represents, taking it from one side to the other. It didn't say you had to move 15 feet. Didn't say you had to turn the boat around. Didn't say you got to get around. Didn't come with a whole bunch of physical things. What I'm trying to get across to you is the, the, the outcome you want, the effect you want has a cause. And what I'm trying to get across to you all is the cause is your consciousness. It is your what you are imagining. It is what you are it is, it is the role you're playing in your mind, which you are believing yourself to be. Broke, black and stuck, black lives don't matter, women can't get ahead. Whatever you believe to be true, that reticular activation system, that part of your brain that, that focuses your life toward what it is you believe and what's relevant for you, it's gonna show you things in life that bring that back to you. Life is a mirror. It's reflecting what you believe yourself to be. When you put an outfit on and you look in the mirror, is anybody surprised about what they're wearing? Is anybody like, man, I didn't know I put that on. That's why we look in the mirror. It's to check ourselves. It's to make sure we look the way we want to look. It's to make sure things are what we think they are. Well, that's what Saturdays are. They're a mirror. They are this, the, the stuff I talk to you all about, it's not, like I said, it's not religious, it's not denominational. I am talking to you in a way where I want all of you to be able to see yourself in the information and see where can you grow? What can you be? It's not following me. Nobody's calling me reverend. Nobody's out here. We ain't out here. No, it's not about that. That's not what this is about. This is about giving information so that you all can, and we all can learn and come together and reason and realize, how can I take this information and apply it in my life when I get off this call? 
How can I sit and be quiet for a second and imagine myself to be what I want to be? That's the creative aspect of you. How can I, how can I, what do I want to be in my, my life? It's just a simple movement of the net. It's a simple shift in mind. When you shift in mind, you're now in the place where that, you're now in a place that thinks like the person you want to be. So you're going to have different thoughts. See, a lot of us want to grow, but don't want to change. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Almost, let me go down on one knee for that one. Preach. I'm just saying, <laughs> let me turn around and just, you know, you know, I mean, listen, contrary Say to that opinion, I, I, you know, I know you guys may be thinking, but I'm just going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm not walking on water. This is still the carpet. I'm just letting you guys know. I don't want anybody to be, you know, it's actually carpet. It just seems maybe like, but it's carpet. But no, we all want to grow, but we don't want to change. But if you don't move that net to the right side, you're not going to change. You can stay out here all night. You can reason it out with yourself. You can justify it. You can talk about all the, you don't know how I grew up. You can talk about trauma. You can talk about past lives. You can talk about a whole bunch of stuff, but that, but you just, that's cool. As long as you're okay with pulling that net about the water and there's nothing in it. As long as you're okay with that cool but i assume you're here for the same reason i'm here as i just because i'm talking that's why i want everybody to participate because just because i'm talking don't mean i'm not i'm not thinking about the same things you're thinking about that's why i'm talking about it right i i got tired of seeing my net and it's still in life there's certain years of life where i'm looking at my net and it's looking a little thin it's looking a little skimpy right and i'm like nah man that's not gonna work it's not gonna work I need to move. So what is it? What part of my mind? What do I need to change about what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and believing to be true? Because that's what's showing me. I, it's my net is on this side and it's looking a little lean and there's a whole lot of hands out for what I'm pulling up and it ain't a lot. <laughs> so then guess what? You know, there's going to be getting people not going to be getting even a, a whole or half. They're going to be getting quarters. I'll be cutting it up, boy, like it's some kind of, I don't know, it'll be like thin slices, right? So that's what we're here for, is we have to realize like, hey, there's this way of doing it, and there's this way of doing it, right? And so that's, we have to, we, in order to, in order to grow, we have to change. We're going to have to change the way we're thinking, how we're thinking, and what we're thinking about. So when we talk about money, money is just a form of expression that wealth uses, according to what you what your consciousness is. So there, there was no $100 bill back in the day, but there's still people rich because consciousness is all time. Consciousness is everywhere, all the time. Everyone has it. So whether that's land, cattle, gold, silver, stocks, whether that is dollar, peso, yen, lira, Deutsche Mark, doesn't matter what it is, whatever is relevant to you is going to be expressed according to your consciousness. That's why people get money and can't keep it because money is an expression of consciousness. And if that money is bigger than your conscious, it's like putting a weight on your back that you can't lift. You can try to put it on there, but you're going to crumble. You're not going to be able to hold on to it. You're not going to be able to sustain it. It weighs too much for you. So I pee a lot of people who win the lottery can't keep it. A lot of athletes who got money can't keep it because they grow up. A lot of athletes grow up poor. Now they have millions of dollars. And so they have a physical gift that got them access to money that they don't have the mental equivalent to master or handle. So then either they manage it and blow it or they give it to somebody else and they steal it. But, but consciousness, when you know that no man can take my life from me, right? No man can take a physical thing from me because my conscious, I don't have the consciousness of being robbed. I don't have the consciousness of being sick or poor. I don't have that consciousness. So somebody could be plotting all day. That's cool. But that, but that's why that mind, that personification, that mind, Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. It's not a person. It's a mind. It is a personification of a mind. It's a person who knows that the physical being, the name that we call ourselves and our consciousness are one. And whatever can happen to this consciousness can happen to me. But if I'm not thinking properly, then the consciousness has to let it be. So when people say, well, why does God let suffering happen? Well, why did you let it happen? Why are you suffering? <laughs> you let it happen. What? So you blame you blaming that cat, but you over here, but yeah, but not me. Yeah, here's my dark. I'm just going to duck you. Let me do that. Yeah, that ain't for me. Don't judge. Right? 
So yeah, we, we, we let ourselves be poor, just like we think there's a God in the sky letting other people be poor. We let ourselves be sick, broke, upset, mad over something that we can just change the net, over something that we can literally just decide, hey, I want something different. So now let there be. Let there be wealth. Let there be health. Let there be peace. The same relationship that, that God has with me, assuming that's love, is the same relationship I can have with other people. If I know who I am, I and my father are one. If I think like that, then I get that. Right? These are things that we have to understand, but we're trying to remain as we are and live better. But we're living as we are because we're thinking as we are. And that's not a bad thing. This is just something to come to consciousness of, to become cognizant, to become awake and aware. I just had a thought and it was like, oh, you know how people always say like, take me as I am. And it's like, take me as I am and just, I want everything my way and I want everything, but just, but I don't want to change. Just take me as I am. <laughs> yeah. When people tell me, take me as I am, I just say, no, thank you. When I go to the buffet, I don't just take it as it is. If I don't want it, I ain't eating it. So what do you mean, take me as I am? Absolutely not. Not if as you are don't work. Take you as you are. If you had to tell me that, you're not anything to take. LeBron James don't got to go up to a woman and be like, take me as I am. Do you think he, do you think he got to say that? I mean, come on, man. What are we talking about? Like, no. If you happen to sell me who you are, then I I'll gladly pass. Thank you. No, let me know when you somebody else did. <laughs> Tell me, let me know when you changed. <laughs> when you've had a makeover, right? Like, come on, man. Like, if you buy a house and you're buying it and you're buying it as is, most of the time you're not going to give top dollar for it. I mean, is that true? When you go to a car dealership and they say, as is, no warranty, are you like, oh man, that's man, I'm winning. Oh, can I let me buy it now before this dude change his mind? Right? You're thinking like, man, oh, do I really need it that bad? Because this thing might not start tomorrow. And now, and it don't have no warranty on it. And I didn't spend my bread on it. No warranty didn't start. Like, no, like nobody's gonna do that, right? So if just 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 stop it. If you're not going to let somebody else do it, don't don't offer yourself that way. Right. So but the whole point is that we all have the ability. We all have the ability to be what we want. But we have to understand in order to be that. What do we want? We have to become aware. What do I want? Now, when I ask somebody that. That's like the hardest question in the world when I ask people. Boy, they start stuttering, stammering, they start making up stuff. They start telling me why they can't. I'm like, what do you want? Man, I, I can't, man, I man, I can't even buy these tires I really want. I'm like, wait, how do you start off with what you don't want if I ask you what you wanted? They start telling me a whole story, right? But that's the key word. Story. We have a story we're telling ourselves. We have a narrative we're playing in our background. And that narrative we're playing is actually the one we're living. But it's, you know how you, you know, has anybody ever been working and they play some music and literally you, you forgot the music was on. It's just been on so long. You just don't even hardly hear it. It's just, you kind of, it comes just kind of blends in your environment. And you just kind of just like, you know, a little soft jazz in the back, or, you know, you may be playing two live crew. I don't know, but it could be anything, right? But you're playing something because, you know, you like a little music while you're working and stuff like that. And you, it almost blends into the environment. You almost stop hearing it after a while, right? We have a story we're telling ourselves, and a lot of us have been telling it so long that we don't even realize it. We stop hearing it. But boy, it's playing. And guess what? When somebody walks into the room, everybody hears that music. You just forgot it because it's been it's blended in. Everybody hears that music. That story you're telling yourself, you forgot it because you ain't heard it because it's not just been playing so long. But everybody else sees it. They see your attitude. They see your ridiculousness. They see your trifling and shufflessness. They see you doing what they see. They hear. They see what you're playing. Right? And so we're out here. Then we try to walk out and act like we're somebody else and then wonder why nobody believes it. That's why. Because they can hear the music, man. They can see what you're playing in your life. They can see it. Right? So we're here. This is why we're here. We have to pick, we have to pick a side. 
we have to pick out the story we're telling ourselves because we are the create we are the narrator narrator of that story we are the director and the actor we're the script writer and you know Denzel we we writing writing producing and acting we doing the lighting the cameras we're doing everything this is our life it's our story and it's hard to live something you're giving away to everybody right so a lot of times people you know when i when i since we're you know i like to talk about a little bit of everything because i know there's a little bit of everybody on here when we talk about this word, business, right? Most of us are talking about being entrepreneurs here and things like that, right? We talk about the word business. We talked about your first business is yourself, right? You are your first business. But now when we talk about the word business, think about how many of us have a business that's not really ours. How many, is, how, how many of us have a business that's running us? How many of us have a business where we don't even determine the hours anymore? We just go stay open in case people in case people come. We got to keep our phone with us in case people call. How many of us like, well, I better go to the shop today in case somebody stopped by. And sooner or later, you realize this is not even, this is only your, this is your responsibility. This is your business only in responsibility but the part you but the reason the reason you created it was was actually for the joy you wanted to be something you wanted to have something you wanted to have your own tire shop you wanted to have your own beauty salon you wanted to have your own, own whatever else it is the joy and the excitement of that the experience you were looking forward to and now you've given it away to everybody's thoughts. Well, you know, girl, uh, you know, people don't really do hair like that around here. Oh, you know, girl, you know, uh, they don't really like to pay for all that. Oh, girl, uh, you know, you can just do at home. Or, man, you know, people don't buy. People will, you, you will have a business. You'll have a thought. You'll have a baby. You'll have a child. You'll have an idea. And, you, and you'll present it to the world. And, they, boy, they will, they, will, they will kidnap it. And then bring it back to you like it's their child. They'll be loaning your experience out to you. So now all you have is the responsibility of the business, but no joy. What do you want for yourself? If you want a business, what do you want? When there's a business, there is a business, and there is who's volunteering. I got to keep people involved because, you know, yes, sir. All right. There's a business. Finish this statement. Finish this statement. There is a business and there is. Customers. See what I mean? That's why people fail. Thank you. Your <laughs> failure. Appreciate it. Right. Perfect. So, right? That's why because people don't volunteer. That's right. <laughs> right. And so it's perfect. But here's what I mean. And no, and I appreciate you. Here's what I mean. There's a business. And there's customers. Okay, if there's a business and there's customers, whose name is the business in? Your customers? Definitely not. Who's well then why did you say customers? Why are they, they are the other end of the business? Huh? They are the other end of the business. No, Without they're them, not. They have no, no they're not. No, they're not. You know who's the other end of the business? You. Hmm. you. I am the business. Yeah, yes, but but here's what I mean by that. You are the other end of the business because you have a business. You have a business. You have a business. You're not a business. You have a business. So you have a relationship with this business. So when you have a relationship with this business, you now, so if you had a significant other and your mom said, hey, you said, hey, I met this girl. And your mom say, okay, describe her. Tell me about her, right? You are describing your relationship to this person, what you see in her, how this goes for you. So when you have a business, if your customer is the business, then who's deciding the relationship? When you say, I, I, have, I say, look, what is your business? And you said, uh, and you say so-and-so. I'm like, okay, if you, and I say, okay, what is your business? And you said, whatever. And I said, okay, but. That's just what you're doing. But you're not telling me what your relationship to the business is. You're not telling me when you have a story. You have a story about your business. I have a business, but I ain't sold nothing in three months. 
uh, I have a business, man, but I got to stay open seven days a week because I got to make sure I get enough people. I got a business, but you know, the economy is not really working real well. We're giving our business out to other people. If you said, I have a business and I said, what? And you said something to me like, man, I have a tire business. Um, man, I'm open, you know, seven days a week, you know, whatever, but I have a tire business. I'm successful. Man, I can't keep tires in my shop. People are always coming to my shop. People are always asking me to get these tires. Man, I have so many referrals. I have people coming to me all the time. Man, like I'm a hit in my community. You have, a, you are now telling me you are self-defining your relationship to this thing that you are interacting with. If you don't have that story, somebody else is going to create the story for you. So you're going to have the business, the responsibility, but how will you have any joy if somebody else is telling you, uh, why do you think in, when we were teenagers, it was hard to date? Because we could have want to have a relationship with a girl, but our mom or dad would be like, no, nah, you can't go tonight. Can't go tomorrow. No, nah, tell that girl to get off my phone. Remember back in the day before there were cell phones and everything like that, they had to call the house phone and your parents, who's on this line? right? And all the other stuff, because now they're getting in the middle of your relationship with something. And what I'm saying is, is when we have a business, when we have a, when you have a business, and I'm glad you said what you said, because most people believe what you said, but what you said is on the right side is on the net with the five people. I'm going to show you how to get to this side, the, the different mind. These are minds. Business. Your business is a reflection of you. So you have a business. So then you say, okay, on the other side of that are your customers. Cool. How do you know who you're, when you're walking down the street, how do you know who your customer is? They fit my mission and my target. So what, so they said, you said they fit my mission and my target. My now, business is not just a business, they, it's an objective. It's a what? A objective, a mission, what a goal. It? It's a, no, so, it's an experience. It's something it's more that, than that you, it, no, it is that. Here's what I mean by that. If it's, if it's not an experience, you could have picked something else. Experience for who? You. Right. But what about for my customers and the overall outlook of what my business aims to do? Yeah. But whose business is it? Mine. It's a reflection of you. Right. They are giving, you guys are a reflection of me. Here's what I mean. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for me. But what I'm doing for myself, you're getting the benefit of. Okay. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't talk to you this way. If I didn't love right. it, I wouldn't show up. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't be up here sweating in the cold. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't be pacing around like a lion, you know, from three o'clock in the morning, like somebody pop on. They would, we can get that action right now. 345, 446. That's why I don't need accountability. I don't need motivation because I'm inspired. This thing, this business I created is a reflection of myself that I want to give to the world. So what I do then is I create the customer that goes with my business. What does that mean? I have a business selling tires. Now, instead of just creating a business selling tires and trying to find who likes it, I create a business selling tires and now I'm going to create my client to go with it. Okay. So now what I'm going to say is I create a business selling tires and I have, and, the, and these are my clients. I have, man, my clients love what I have to offer. They love to pay me what I want. My clients love to refer other people who, who do the same or feel the same way about me. I always got the right people in my shop. My tires are always sold out. That's not a person. It's not a particular person. It's an experience. I don't know if it's going to be a woman buying the tires, a man buying the tires, black, white, red. I don't care because no matter what they, no matter who they are, they did what I wanted, which was treat my, they are a reflection of how I feel about this thing that I'm presenting to the world. Right now that ref, that, experience is governed by, by me. So my success is governed by me because I have the consciousness of success. It's reflected in my customers. So I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to create a business and then hope somebody likes it. I can't control somebody. What, somebody, what if you don't like mustard and somebody creates a business and they come to your door with mustard? They can go next door. They can go next door, but they, but, but they need you. They need you. So the point is, right, is that they're going to go without it because you don't like it. So your business is you you want to create your business is a reflection of you. It's a relationship. You have a story with it. What story are you telling yourself? My business is always booming. 
My business is always jumping. My leaf is always green. My business is always green. My business never ceases to bear fruit. It's not based on the economy. It's not based on a recession. It's not based on, it's not based on that. It's not based on anything outside of me because my, my, my desire, my name, my business was started within me. It started here. So where, where does it get lost and it becomes governed by someone else? That's where we lose control. So we only have responsibility and no joy because now we're, we have to help people come in, hope people come in, call them, remind them and do all these other things. And it's exhausting, right? When all you have to do is say, this is my business. This is, and this is the people, this is the people that go with that business. I created both now. So now when I, when I advertise, what I'm really doing is putting out a bad signal. I'm saying, hey, all the people that I've already created in my mind by assuming that my business operates this way, I make this much money, you can decide that. Where my shop is, you can decide that. How What your hours are, you can decide that. You don't let anyone else decide that for you. Otherwise, you lose. Otherwise, you're always in fear of what they say, what they think, if they come, if they pay, if they don't want any tires, if it, you're always, you've lost your vision. You've lost your own baby, right? Because you've given it away to someone else. So my point is, is that the, the, the idea is a reflection of you. And where most people miss it is they don't, they don't make the expression a, a reflection of you. The idea, the beginning is a reflection of the outcome. The, the business is in the middle. The idea goes through your business to get the outcome of itself. Your business is, the outcome is physical. The idea is not, right? When, when, when we have kids, right? There's a start and the middle is the business. In the middle is the pregnancy. The outcome should reflect the two people that started. We don't get, we don't give birth to it. And now somebody else gets, that's called adopting, right? That's somebody else is now in control of something you created and you started. So now you've lost control, right? My point is that people believe that their life is governed on someone else. But if it is at any point, then it's not yours. You, we have to understand that people, that money, health, opportunities, all those things, they come from us. They may come through other things. They come from us. They may come through other things, right? So if I have an idea of wealth, that idea of wealth expresses itself in every way possible at every moment possible. Just like if I step in that mirror, it's a reflection of me. So as long as I'm wearing that, it's going to keep showing me that back. But if, if I go in the mirror of my bathroom or I go in the mirror of my kitchen, it's going to show me the same reflection. Because it's only I am the creator. I am the operant power. I am the cause. The mirror, the people, the world are only a reflection of the cause. They're not the creator. They're only the reflector. Yes, sir. So help me out. I'm, I'm not following all the way. Are you saying that on the other side of the business is not the customer specifically, but on the other side of the business is the experience that that customer is, is getting based on what you have put into the business? Is that where you're going with it? Yes, based on what you have put into the business psychologically. What is your, what is, when, if you have kids and you send them to school, what is the teacher, what is the teacher's experience with your child? What is that a reflection of? Two things. One, how my child acts based on what I've taught them and who they are. And then also the personality of the teacher. Yeah, but, but, but to your point, it's you. If they get in trouble, who are they calling? <laughs> if they get me. sick, who are they calling? If there's somebody needs to pick them up, who are they calling? If they're if they're being dropped off just casually, who are they calling? Who's doing it? Right? What you have created and present to the world is a reflection of you. That's why they're calling you for good, bad, and other. So you're always in control because this is your creation. So what I'm saying is that people lose people lose their business and their ability to have the type of business they want because they are not in control of their business psychologically. Telling themselves the story of, what do I, I, I created this thing. What did I create it to be? You created a fitness business or something, right? So, so why, did you create, why did you create a fitness business? How come you didn't create a lemonade business? I created a business that reflected my personal goals. Okay. And what I want to see in my experience for my customers. That's correct. So then your outcome has to, so then how did you create something that the outcome is not a reflection of you? That's not possible. That's correct. So then the customer doesn't matter. But the customer has to matter. 
without the customer, what experience is there going to be except for my own? That's true. The customer, you have a liquor store. The customer comes in and steals your chips. So <laughs> that's why I got the clock underneath. Sorry. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So the point then becomes, yeah, but if the customer's out of your control, if they're not a reflection of you properly, just having somebody in your store isn't isn't always good. It's a, your your thought brings people the right people in and keeps the right people out. Mm. Your thought is so when people talk about the law of attraction, this is really what they mean. It means whatever I'm perceiving myself to be is the is the is an assumption. My assumptions go out to the world and attract the reflections of it. Right? When you are right. dressing yourself, you are dressing yourself according to where you're going. When you have a business, you are psych you need to psychologically address yourself or dress yourself to the outcome you want to see in the mirror. People are a mirror. They are the world is reflecting what you are first thinking and it's bringing it back to you. The so that's what I mean when I say they create your customer. I am saying that when if you created if you created the thing, how are you not in control? What part of this what part of this circle are you not are you not in control of in the sense of if it starts with you, right? It's your idea, it's your business. You said you wanted to create uh, a fitness brand, not lemonade. Business is business. Money is money. So then how come you just don't pick something that just creates money? Well, because you said you wanted something that reflected you. So if it reflected you in the beginning, how does it not reflect you in the end if it's done correctly? How does it not? How, how does it not? We are thinking because something in the middle called a customer is they now, you're now saying they took over, but that's not true. What they are is a reflection of your, of your thought of your business. So if you think your business is not going to be successful, that's what's going to happen. You're going to either have nobody coming or people stealing from you. If you think that your business is um, you picked a business because you said it was a reflection of you. But my point is, is that what part of you and most people only choose a certain part of themselves. They don't choose the entire self. It's your entire self. That's a reflection of you. The name of your business, the location of your business, the type of business, your bit, the name on your business, the insurance on your business. All these are in your name. Right. And they're because you are the most important person in the equation. Your customers are only reflection of what you decided to put out, out into the world. And, the, and what you put out into the world is not only the start and it's not only the service or product, it's also the outcome. And this is the part we give away to customers. We give the outcome away. So you have a, you have a child, you know, and you, you walk down the street and you let your customer name it. When we turn this in different areas, we'd be like, hell no, I wouldn't do that. So then right. why are we letting somebody else, why do we think somebody else gets to determine our outcome? If they don't get to name our kid and that's the outcome, why do we get, why would we let them determine this outcome? It's only because people have said it works that way, but it doesn't. It's the belief in that is why people go through it. But you would never do that over here. This is your child. You went through nine months of pregnancy and getting chips and rubbing feet and doing everything else, right? And now you got this outcome and you walk down the street. Hey man, what you think? Uh, Fred, you think that's okay? No. You'd be like, man, I went through all that. I'm about to name, I'm, I'm no, I'm uh, either me or her. Somebody up in, up in here that went through this thing is naming this thing, not, yeah, tell your mama, yeah, I like that name. No. My mama, she tried to tell, no, we ain't doing that, right? My wife and I are going to name this kid. The people who went through the experience, who started it, who went through the pregnancy, the customer, and the outcome. So you have a business, you have customers, and you have cash, right? So the, all of that is a reflection of you, right? And when you understand that, and you say, here's my story. Man, I got a wonderful business. I'm always making money. I'm always sold out of whatever it is I'm doing. I got clients calling me left and right. Man, I, I got to turn my phone off. They're calling me so many times. Every time I turn my phone on, I got messages. I got Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is, because I'm not really a big social media person. That ain't my thing. Uh, but I'm just saying. Uh, but my whole you've told yourself a story. You've now created the entire circle. 
You don't give it away to other people. Your customers are a reflection of you if you're doing it right. You're not waiting for them. They're waiting for you, right? They're not controlling you. You're in control, right? If you, the what you put in, you know, how people say, oh, this was cooked with love, right? Yeah, like it's it's what you put into something. It's a law, the sowing and reaping. It's not, it is just as accurate as gravity as anything else. The laws of mind are just as accurate. They are just as, they are just as specific and they are just as infinite. So we're not talking about luck. We're not talking about, but that's why people believe in a whole bunch of marketing and advertising. Not that that's bad, but it's because they are trying to sell something. And why do you think everybody hates the car dealer? You go on there and you mad the dude talking to you. How crazy is that? It's because that person, generally people in that area don't understand sales. They think they they think they have to trick you. They think they have to, and nobody wants to feel tricked. Those are there anticipating a scrap. Everybody walk in like, what's happening? Everybody's already ready to scrap. And they pulling up to the lot with an attitude. And you drove here. And you mad at the dude that you going to see. Hey, what's up, man? I, my dad, I remember my dad. My, I remember my dad going somewhere with my dad. And he said, he walked in, he and I walked in. And the guy was like, hey, good morning, sir. How's your morning going? I don't know. We'll see. Depends on what you tell me. <laughs> how, how are you mad at this cat? It'd be like me knocking on your door and you're like, good morning. I'm like, I don't know. You tell what's up. <laughs> Came to me. You at my house. What's your problem? Right? But it's because nobody wants to feel like they're being tricked or conned, like they're being scammed or schemed. But the people who are doing it in that business generally are taught to do that because you're like, nobody really wants to buy this car and you got to make sure you do this or that. So their whole thing that they put off is what they're getting back. And I'm saying to you that if you put love in your business, success in your business, and that comes from you into your business, you are determining the outcome. You are drawing the people who are a physical reflection of what you are psychologically believing to be true. You cannot think failure and draw successful people. So yeah, you'll have some people, but they won't pay you on time. They want to pay you half, or they'll be like, hey man, can I get a discount? Hey, hey black man. Hey, brother. Hey, oh, they'll hit you. They'll hit you with everything. Oh, hey, sis, girl, you know, it's hard out here, girl. You know, I got these kids. But I'm just trying to get my summer thing on. Right. So uh, can you give me a little discount on that thing? You know, can I pay you like a little now? But she talking to you with her hair and her nails done. Right. Like, no, it's it's but it's but it's the, what I'm saying to you is that at the highest level of thought. At the highest level of thought in the beginning, there was nothing on this earth. So someone had to create it and someone had to create it for a reason. And whatever reason they created it for, isn't that what it is? When God said, let there be light. Now we can, now light is used for a thousand different things, but it's not used against the will of the creator. It's not, nobody's got, nobody owns it. Nobody can take the sun down because Somebody over there on the East Coast or somebody in LA got bad credit. Nobody, like, like the owner never loses its possession. And your right mind, when you're thinking at the highest level of mind, you realize that you are the creator of your life, the entirety of it. Just like when God created this earth, the entirety of it, all the birds, all of this, the water, the this or that, there was no one else to create it. When you think at the highest level of thought, you'll realize there's no one to, else to create your desire but you. And so you create your desire based on what you want this experience to be. From beginning, the middle are your customers, but they're only going to be people using what you created. They don't get to use it any day. They don't get to take the sun down to like, you know what? Uh, I think I want the sun to turn this way because, you know, I'm trying to get my tan on and that and I brought over there. She, she in my way. You know, like nobody gets to change what it is or how it works. When you understand at the highest level of thought on this side, of the, on that left side of the line, at the mind that knows that I and the highest level of thought are one, whatever I think and can imagine to be so is exactly what it will be as long as I don't give it away to other people's fears, anxieties, worries, to all the people on the five. Instead of telling you got to stay out all night, Telling you got to, hey, we'll, 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 we'll be out there with you. You, man, you out here getting it. Yeah, but I ain't been home in a day. And by the time I come home now, my lady mad because I ain't been home in three days. Like, that ain't going to work, but I'm out here getting it. Yeah, but no, you don't have to sacrifice one or the other. That is the point, right? So 
from just like God created this whole world and everything in it and the way it works. You create your whole business and everything in it and the way it works. It doesn't mean control people. It means because you control your mind, you now will now your mind is going to find the right people because you don't know who the right people are anyway. You don't know who who wants to work out. Somebody that looks like they should don't. And somebody that looks like they do every day will be banging on your door like, hey, man, I, well, let's work out. Let's do this. So it's our conscious mind doesn't know who those people are, but the highest level of mind does. And so when you create your business with that understanding that I'm the highest level of thought and according to how I think this is how it's going to go for me and you hold that to be true, that's what is going to come into your physical world because it's a physical reflection of the creative thought. It's the effect of the cause. Don't give that away to anything. And you'll see, you will have, you will have as you go. If you keep peace, if you keep that thought in your mind, it will stay there. It will keep producing in drought, despair, debt. It'll keep producing and it'll keep you out of all those things. It'll keep you from grinding all night, doing all kinds of things that everybody feels like they have to do because they're trying to make something from where they are. They're trying to make success from an impoverished mind, from a lack mind. So they think I'm just going to use more of my body because I don't know how to use my mind. And that's what that person did. They said, hey, put your net on the other side and you'll be straight. Right. That's that's what that's what we're doing here. Right. That's what we're doing here. All right. Uh, shoot, we only got a, a minute or two. But does anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to ask before we wrap it up? You have Kari thinking. I'm thinking I'm, I'm still I'm trying to. I'm still thinking about the whole uh, experience uh, part because you called me out pretty bad. So um, I'm thinking about, I'm trying to figure out um, how to better define, because I, I agree with you, but I'm trying to figure out how to better define how I define what experience I want to have mm -hmm. so that I can make sure I'm not having to pull in customers, but mm -hmm. they're just attracted based on the experience that I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. So Almost like so almost a great way to do that is telling yourself a story. Write a story. Sit down and write a story and say, this, this is how my life is going, or this is how my business goes. Write a story like an author. We read books that are nonfiction all the time. We read books that are fiction all the time. We read them, but somebody had to write it, right? So so on, you on the, huh? I was gonna say on the opposite end of that, I've also heard uh advice that says write your character definition who's your customer write it out cindy is my customer or joe is my customer he looks like this he shops here he does this blah 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 blah. so that when i'm putting together my experience i can still help to tailor it to who i think my target audience is going to be can you speak on that? Oh, well okay okay is your is is do you want do you do you want and it's and it's good but do you have to tailor it here's what i mean here's what i mean do you do you care where the money comes from not much. Okay. So then what I would tailor is the experience I have with this person. I don't care if this person works at the car shop, if they're white, black, a woman, or whatever else it is. Is what type of if I don't, if I if I only want the money, let's say I don't want to be successful and I love doing what I'm doing. So I love doing what I'm doing and I love the money. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tailor my relationship to this person. I don't care if they're white, black, a woman, a dog, cat. Every person that comes to my business is a perfect as a as a match made in heaven for me. They're perfect. I'm perfect for them. They're perfect for me. They love what I have to offer, and they love to they love to come. Like they love to pay me. Like we have such a great time. Like everybody that comes to me, this is the experience I have with them, no matter what they look like. I don't know what that person looks like, but my true self, that highest level of thought, knows everyone that's going to reflect that experience. So no matter what they look like, every time they leave, you feel the same way. No matter what they look like, every time they leave, you got your money. So if you don't care what they look like and you got your money, then cool. Now, if you want to just do something for boys, that's different. If you want to do something for girls, that's different. If you want to do something for seniors, that's different. You can, but even with a boy, you don't know what they look, you don't know who they are. You just know it's a boy. So you say, okay, I'm going to do something from boys, 8 to 12. So now I have a thing for boys, 8 to 12 on Sundays. And every Sunday I have a pack full of 8 to 12-year-old boys that are perfect for me. They love to work out. We have such a great time. They get such great results. Their family's happy. I'm happy. I'm paid well early and on time or on time. Like even if I make a subset of something, the outcome is the same, which is success. The outcome is the same, which is my desired experience. It doesn't matter who it's with. I want the same experience, the same outcome. 
right? So I can define it as in groups, but my but my outcome, the desire is still the same. I want to be successful. I want it to be fun. I want them to get great results. I want to enjoy my time. I want whatever else it is, right? So you can make that in subset categories, or you can just make that your business overall. I have a marvelous, successful business doing what I love. Man, people are coming to me from everywhere. I'm sold out. I'm sought out. I'm sought after. People can't get enough of what I'm doing. There's always people calling me and this or that or the other. Now, one day you wake up with a bright idea and you want to do something, especially for young girls, you know, 10 to 16. And you and, you know, your lady are out there and you guys are working out and you're because you want to deal with that demographic specifically. That's cool, too. But at the end of the day, you still want the same outcome, whether it's with a demographic or a whole group. I'm successful. You still want your day to feel the same. How do you want your day to feel? How do you want, what is your relationship with your business? I have a marvelous, successful business doing what I love. Every day I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm whole, I'm successful. I'm always prospering. My income is always increasing. Like that is not a person. That is not a, a particular, that is an experience. That's an outcome. And so you let your higher self determine what's the right person to express that. Because you may think it's this person and you go to them and you be like, damn, I just knew they were going to like it and they hated it. Right. So it's about what do you want your experience to be? What do you want your end result to be? That's not a person. That's an experience. And you have to find the right. Once you identify the experience, your higher self will say, OK, this is the person in the world that reflects that experience. Right. Then you don't have to look for anybody. Then you don't have to chase anybody because you don't know who you're chasing anyway. Not really. You don't know who you're chasing. Like You don't know if there's this person walking right by you who's swole and think they want to work out and you get them out there and they want to quit after two pushups. Then they say, well, man, I just started a little bit. Can I just not pay? Then you got some old lady with glasses on and two cats in the cart and rolling down Walmart and she out there doing it for an hour. She's like, I'm doing my best. And you so happy to be with her because she's, you can see like what she wants you're offering. And it's that feeling that's, you're doing everything for a feeling. Whether it's ice cream, marriage, your business, it's for the outcome. The experience gives you the feeling. That feeling is for the true you. When you feel, when you close your eyes and you're this, or you close your eyes and you taste that, or you see somebody really into what you're offering. It's the feeling you get from that. That's what it's for. So every person can be that reflection of that feeling governed by your right, your highest mind thinking and bringing those people to you. So I'm here, right, man, we'll don't be tailor your business to your customer, tailor your business to the experience you want to have. I'm in, God, that's it. No, seriously, bro, that's it. I tell everybody that, that is it. You do that and the game is up. You win. You'll never be up sleepless nights. You'll never be worried. You'll, it will never happen. You will win all day, every day. Sorry, I'm going to schedule you a one-on-one -on -one with Coach Lucky. I'll send you the info because I, I feel like you this this can go a little further out. Okay, you're on mute. So I'm hearing you through his speaker and it's kind of low. I only heard like half of that. I said I was, I'm going to schedule you a one-on-one -on -one with Coach Lucky because I think you guys need a little more time for this. And, and he's got a, another appointment coming up, so I got to cut this short. Um, but I do want to thank everyone for coming. I dropped the um, the URL to the website uh, on the link in case you guys haven't seen. We have the replays from the previous week. We'll be loading today's replay as well. And um, I, I'm just grateful that all of you guys are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and Kari, I'm gonna get back to you on that. I'm gonna get back to you because you, you need some more time. All good, Beto, thank you. Yeah. And thanks, coach. Oh man, my, my pleasure. And thank you to all of you. And that's the same thing I wanna say to all of you. Your life is about you. It's about your, what do you want to experience? Everything you do is for an experience so that you can get the feeling of the outcome of that. Choose what you want. And assume, walk in the vision of having that, and it will move you to the places where that physical thing exists. Don't give your stuff away. You didn't come here to live for everyone else. You just got married. You just had kids. You just you came here by yourself, and you're going out by yourself. You came here to have different experiences. Call to marriage. Call kids. Call these things, but they're all experiences that that are part of your life that you came here to experience overall. And if you constantly can keep in your mind, what do I really want? How do I want to feel? You'll start to hone in on that and you'll start to see your experiences physically reflecting that. You'll start to see more things like that give you more joy, give you more pleasure, start to reflect your, your desire. And you'll, you'll be like, man, I feel good. Man, that was great. Look what I ran into. Things you could have never did in your conscious mind. You would have never knew that person existed. Or you can imagine they calling you. You never can imagine running into this person. And that's what this is about. So thank you all so much. All right, guys.
Thank you again. If you want to register to get this in your calendar early, you guys can go on the link and register for next week. Or if you've already uh, set this up and you've already registered, I do have the, the, the um, links go out on Fridays. So you guys can have all that information. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I'll be in touch with some of you. All right? Peace. Later. Peace. Later.